in one minute merge onto scenic route 365. Stay straight until you reach your destination. Hey everybody, it's Brandon, Scenic Route Travelers. Today we are going to install a new LP gas detector. Mine went out and um, it's a three wire. So my RV has one of those solenoids. So if you the detector smells gas and it's automatically going to turn off a solenoid um, to make everything safe which apparently they don't use this system anymore so when you buy the uh, a new one it comes with uh, just two wires of black and red mine has three wires um, oh, two reds but one's got a white stripe on it and a yellow one and one red goes to the battery, one red goes to uh, the converter, and one, and the yellow goes to the solenoid. So what we're gonna need to do is uh, put it on a toggle switch. Uh, I believe Safety Alert will sell a direct replacement that comes with the solenoid, but I'm just going to use a toggle switch. So if, if your detector beeps and goes off or you smell the rotten egg smell, you can just flip the switch. Um, you could always just go turn the valve off at the LP tank. You could do that too. Um, and I guess they don't use the solenoids anymore. So because they don't think they need to use the solenoids anymore, and uh, I'm just going to put in a toggle switch. It's illuminated. Um, that way, if it's in the middle of the night, I can see it and just, you know, reach down there and turn it off, and no big deal. And I also got red. They had blue, they had uh, yellow or amber, and they had red. And, uh, you know, most of them, I've, I've never even seen the other colors other than red, but I. I almost got blue just because I would know that's something totally different. Um, these switches on my test panel, uh, you know, they show me, you know, my LP levels and my black tank and and my gray tank and and uh, and my fresh water. They're red, so I was almost thinking, well, let me get a different color. That way, I would know that that's the switch, but. The, where I'm putting it is going to be way down underneath the bed and there's nothing else illuminated over there and also uh, you know like uh, military or you know people that are doing stuff at night covert operations you know they use red lights uh, so it's low visibility so and the reason I was thought processing all this is because I sleep on this side and this light will be facing me and I did not want to get blinded all night long these little things like this blinking notifications on cell phones I mean they bother me even when I'm sleeping for some reason so that was a thought process I had to go through ended up with the red so anyway I'm at my friend Chris's house he is a um, he fabricates trailers welds stuff like that and I am not a 12 volt wiring person per se. Now I can follow directions fine, uh, but I wanted to have him with me and uh, because he's used to 12 volt wiring and I just feel safer having somebody else collaborate with me on this and um, so that's what I'm doing. So I'm here, I'm at his house and um, just waiting for him to come out and we're going to get started. And I'm going to be in as depth as I can on this because I can't find any videos whatsoever on YouTube that have to change from the using the solenoid to not. So that's why I'm posting this video. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Chris, Brandon's friend. Uh, we're 
changing out an LP gas detector in his pretty awesome RV. So this uh, this old unit obviously is a little, um, I guess you'd call it outdated, antiquated, whatever you want to call it. But uh, anyway, it's it needs to go. So for safety's sake and all that good stuff, we're gonna put a new one in. So enjoy the show. show people this is the wiring and what's gonna have to switch how we're gonna switch it over gotcha because <clears throat> that's what I can't find so we see we had it uh, switched over here is you know going from this is a solenoid wire yep so so the yellow is the solenoid wire yeah, so this yellow wire is a solenoid wire, and uh, it's just been cut and jumped. So you got a hot and a hot, and um, this this hot wire has got the white stripe on it, so that's positive. Mm -hmm. And but this is also one of these goes to the battery, and then one of them goes to the I guess the inverter. Okay. That way, if you running on generator or something I suppose so you got two hots in to the solenoid so I'm not sure what the deal is with the ground we'll take a look at that yeah we're gonna take a look at that we'll meter it out and see what it do and so we just have right now just an alligator clip going from um, a steady hot to a solenoid the way the solenoid operates is that it has to have constant power to to remain open so if you lose power uh, then it'll shut off. It defaults to, to yeah. close. It defaults to close. So if this sensor goes off, apparently it cuts power, and that's how it works. But the new one only has two wires, a black and red. So we're going to open up this panel, and we are going to st stick the ground probably right there or wherever it goes. We'll, you know, whatever. Well, I'll show you that as we go. Figure it out. Yeah. What can go wrong? It's just propane, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that are. What do you want? All right. Uh, one thing we did check, the new one is the same size bolt. Oh, yeah. Sure. Yeah, this is a direct fit. Uh, so it goes right in. Shoot, that's too easy. Yeah. All right. Uh, I will need a meter. Uh, multimeter? Multimeter. All right. You have one around. I don't have, I didn't bring one. You did? Cool. I will show get mine. Look at my feet. Yeah, so uh, as far as as far as the cutting, like uh, I was thinking decided but there's a piece of reinforced wood here yeah. so it's gonna have this is kind of shaky flimsy so that'll be really easy to go through so we're kind of gonna have to put in the new one and then mark it that's fine so i didn't have to go no, too far up but whatever. i'm just gonna go right above it yeah get your switch yeah we'll mark this dude here and let's stick this one in there I will say this, as far as the rest of your jobs go, you know, the like the ones that I do for you? Yeah. I like this one the best. I'm in air conditioning <laughs> laying down in the carpet. <laughs> Absolutely awesome. Well, I aim to please, you know. <laughs> So, oh, I did mention in the little intro what that you're a fabricator and a welder. Oh, no. And you do a lot of 12-volt stuff, so. Yeah, every, uh, everybody at my door now. Yeah. And while he's doing that, I don't know if this will focus because I can't see, but there's a date here, April 24th, 2017. So, these expire. They have an internal clock at five years. <clears throat> start getting a red green flash 
but it's from when it's powered up so if you're at the store and you start looking at the dates don't worry about it it's not like an expiration date until it's hot <clears throat> so when as soon as it gets power is when the clock starts I did not know that that's why I said it on the video because lots of people don't well one, one guy saw in one video and he thought these things lasted six months to a year because he kept looking at the dates and you know they're not cheap uh, but my good buddies at Camping World my favorite store in the world uh, they, they're all like about $89 to $115 <clears throat> they ran this on sale for like $23 and so I grabbed it and then I thought well that's why it's $23 because there's only two wire so I went back to Camping World and uh, talked to the technician there and he said uh, no they're all two wire now and he explained that uh, he said that you just twist the two red wires together on this unit so uh, that's how you switch it over if you don't if you don't do that then you have to remove the solenoid all together <clears throat> or they have a kit and I believe it's the same company safety T safety alert and they sell one with the solenoid but I didn't find that out until late last night and uh, so the solenoid is about fifty dollars and the and then the sensor, you know, is about $90. Yes, Convenient, but yet very inconvenient. <laughs> Having a plug right here that close, especially when I'm. Uh, tool awesome actually i do have a knife on me we're in mississippi it's against the law to not have a pocket knife oh i got a pocket knife if you didn't know that yeah here watch this that's not a pocket knife bro yeah, it is. that's a survival wilderness skin and deer knife that's urban, which is urban, also urban survival you know in mississippi required <laughs> <laughs> but i like my old timer knife Yeah, he's, you're a classic guy. I'm classic. <laughs> I'm vintage even. <laughs> he even drives the speed limit. It's amazing. Uh, actually, I drive under the speed limit. Exactly. 
Got a little bit of trimming to do here. A little trimming. A little trimming. Yeah, well, I uh, apologize for the noise. I uh, forgot a brand new camera. Forgot I had a mute button on here. I'll try to uh, forewarn you at this section. <clears throat> Uh, you can turn down your volume. <laughs> you can edit it out. I can't edit out the cutting. Sure you can. What? That's, what's the point of that? Put music on there. Yeah, it's harder than you think. Jimmy editing. Buffett or something. I think everybody that puts up a YouTube video ought to get at least $10 because it ain't easy. As you can tell from my rest of my other videos, they're pretty crappy. I think they're good. No, they're not. They're terrible. How you like the oscillating tool? I like it. I'm nice. Gonna, I'm going to owe me one of these. <laughs> Pretty swanky. Make sure it work of it. Yeah, I like it. They, I was going <clears> to <throat> go by Harbor Freight. They have an eighth inch blade. Yeah. Uh, I had my daughter looking at Walmart last night while they were there and they couldn't find anything less than seven eighths. But I was like, eh. I guess 7 is probably would have worked. It would have been alright. Same difference as here. We still have to do some trimming. Yeah. But, overall, sure beats a heck out of trying to do it with a jigsaw or your teeth or whatever else. Box knife, something. Box knife. Yeah. Foul language, any of this stuff. like cut the breakers or anything because it won't kill you yeah the fuses will let you know if you do something wrong <laughs> pop 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 yep. All right, we're gonna leave him up there for now couldn't find my good fluke meter because somebody wanted it more than me apparently so is hot y'all and it is grounded that's good news all right <laughs> never know when you buy a used rv you guys never know. never know until something bad happens all right so white is ground uh yes 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 colors of wire did you bring? I just bought a red wire. Oh, well, we'll do something a little different then. Well, uh, we could put, like, a piece of duct tape on it, on down the line, you know, so then right on there. Oh, I've got multicolors of wire. We'll okay. Well, you can just have that red wire and then. 
I won't use it. If I use it, it'll be like to tie something or. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, hey, at least keep, you're honest. I'm just man. keeping it real. At least you're honest. <laughs> That's awesome. I don't I mean I don't wire. Obviously, I, I've it, got. Why do I need to wire? I've got other. friends that wire. Yeah, it's a good point. <laughs> use it to floss with other So he's just checking. Uh, I don't know. Checking to see where the where the hot comes from. He's checking to see where the hot comes from. Mm -hmm. That sounds important. And uh, as with most circuit boards, etc., all these little circuits and fuses have a purpose, which is really neat because you got like one, two, three, four, five stuff, all that nifty little label thing. Which down here, if you come down here to the legend, it's got they're all numbered, right? And this is right here is where it's supposed to have what it's supposed to go to, and nobody wrote it on there. So, nobody. So pretty much, we just have to kind of guess at it, which that's. Of course. Yeah. All right. So we're going to take a pause for me to go find some different colored wire and come back and play. All right, we're going to take this bottom panel off of the uh, fuse box so we can hopefully try to feed the wire easier. Um, you know, from over there at the hole up to the ground. So, there's a grommet in there, but we're not uh, thin people, and we have large hands, and it's a little tight. Manly. Yeah, we're manly men. Manly men. So, this is what we're going to do. But it's just a Torx, I don't know what size, probably about a three. Maybe it'll help a little bit. <laughs> so, and uh, there's a grommet uh, right, right there. So we'll have to. We could feed that wire from the front though, and yep. and then we, we, yeah. Yep. So we'll do that. What's all this stuff? You think? Uh, Flux capacitors. Yeah. If you lick your fingers and stick it in there, you'll find out. Yeah. Negative ghost rider. Eh, positive action. God, do they still make these? What is that? Vacuum tube? Capacitor. That is a capacitor? Yep. Nice little heat sink. Yeah. Similar to Mexico. Mm hmm. All the best stuff's made there. Yeah. So I heard. It's awesome. God, it's so great meter. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're gonna feed through. <clears throat> okay. Pants keep grabbing. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Do that. <laughs> is that how you test your ground man? It Stick is. it in the ground? Not it absolutely is. That does not go through there. What? It's that? pinched tight. Someone actually wired this correctly. That's amazing. Well, that's a Dynamax. You see where you got extra fuses in there too, right? Well, I just put those in there. Oh, good move. Just pointing it out to you. They're all 20 amp those, it's just to get me through. Right. Get to a truck stop or something. Well, you know, you find the, find the bigger problem when you put a bigger fuse in. <laughs> yeah. It's like grabbing a bigger hammer. It is. It really is.
what about uh, coming back around this heat sink here? Can't. The whole thing's encased. Oh yeah. yeah. I guess that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, but there's an exit to this point here, right? Well, there is. Sort of. And then you can go from there to up. Actually, no. It goes back to the case. Yeah, I gotta be able to get back into here. You're spinning it. Yeah, I'm trying to pop it loose. Stick a big Ouch. pair of metal needle nose pliers in there. That's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> about sticking a Phillips head screwdriver and trying to open that up? Well, it's still metal, isn't it? Yeah, I don't think that. Not yet. Mm. This is why I met my buddy Chris. Is I'd be sticking metal Phillips head screwdrivers in the electrical box. Uh, you might do it once. No, I'd probably do it two or three times. <laughs> See what's, it kept happening. Yeah, I don't know, man. I thought maybe the third time's a charm. <laughs> Let me try to stick my hand in there. Let me know how these things work. You can't just shove it straight through there? Mm -mm. Ow. Yeah, see. I don't know if you can see it or not. Yeah, there's a metal, I mean, that uh, plastic clip in there. Yeah. It's not threaded. And it's squeezed in yeah. there and I'm trying to release it from being squeezed. You have to squeeze it from the front, looks like. I, no, I mean, I can feel it from the back, but I can't feel how to release it. That's the problem. <clears throat> oh, that's so much worse. like it pushes like you see the two wings it looks like you push it in and pop it through the front I don't know what the well, you, feels you like. do but the problem that I'm having it I'm trying I can't release them. unless that's like a stopper you know like a... I want to run through the See, the deal is it goes in there, it goes through there, and it squeezes and it click, 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 click. So I'm trying to find it and release it. Or find an alternate ground source. Which I'm about at that point where we'll find an alternate ground source. That's got to be a ground, huh? This right here? Yeah, that. yeah, all this is grounded. So I mean, we could ground to the outside of the case, no problem. This looks like a pretty solid ground and it's not near the edge though. True. <laughs>
black's supposed to be the ground and the red's supposed to be the hot. from the battery, which one comes from the converter? No. Hmm. If we twist them together, that's going to be a problem. So we're going to have to choose which way you want it. Battery would be my best choice. Yeah. Because theoretically, if you're, you're not plugged into shore power, you're not going to have a converter, right? So, yeah, if you're plugged into shore power, you shouldn't have converter, right? No, you'll have converter. If you're not plugged into shore power, you won't have converter. Right. But if you're not, you'll have battery. So, you'll have battery either way. Unless battery is dead, then you have another problem. So, to me, you need to run this off the battery. Yeah. That's what I would think. You want me to get the manual and see if we can figure it out? It's kind of schematic. Yeah, take a look and see right. which, what they recommend. We're going to pause. Be back. While you pause, I'm going to dig through and see if I can find me a better ground. Alright, we're back. We're trying to look. We found a hole in the back of the box, so we'll run the wire through that. Suitable ground. Yeah, so it'll be a ground. to make sure that whatever you're screwing into is not uh, doesn't have wires or plumbing or it's that green wire you know something really detrimental on the back side of it because you'll you won't uh, that won't be good bad things happen to good people at that point or good things happen to bad people I don't know where to look at it either way we don't want to do it uh, uh, your nifty dippy little connections would you do those spike connectors yeah those I was this close to having them, I think. So close, yet so, so close. far away. You need three, eh? Yay. Hey. B. <laughs> um, what else you got there? Oh, I got. That's all you got. Okay. Why? No good? Well, I don't mind running the ground that way. But I'd rather have insulated ones for the other one. Stay tuned. Let's wrap it in electrical tape. For more action. thing is it's color coded. Uh, you don't want to run all of the same colored wire like red hot, red ground, all that good stuff that causes confusion and later on down the road even when it's you doing the work at some different points. Because you've slept mistakes. since then. You've slept since then, you know, Ugh. went to your daughter's wedding or whatever it was, you know, yeah, you did different things. So. It's not big enough. I'm going to have to, going to have to pump. Do you have right. uh, some butt connectors? I do. I've got all sorts of connectors. So at this point in time, you might have pause for the viewers at home. Tell me to go get a coffee or something. Okay, well we're 
trying to figure out where these because we have two hot wires and then the yellow wire for the solenoid so we we're trying to figure out which wire goes to the converter which wire goes to the um, battery well I've got these books luckily they came with this so uh, this is an owner's manual it's got lots of different stuff in it and then the previous owner this was a one owner when I bought it kept everything kept really good records but it has a diagram for the LP detector and uh, let me turn to it real quick bear with me so this is the one that uh, will stock okay. and uh, you know this is definitely the one we're pulling out they don't make it the company's out of business but <clears throat> according to this it says that this could be wired to a convert it could be wired to a battery and a converter or to two batteries and this diagram actually shows one going to the engine battery and one going to the coach battery. Well I have two coach batteries and apparently they're going one to one coach battery one to the other coach battery which is why they're always hot so I guess with most RV stuff you know you gotta just kinda get in here and figure it out um, so what I've decided to do is one wire is black one wire is black with a white stripe so I am going to use as the main hot wire from the red LP detector to the um, black wire with the white stripe so that's where we're at we've been kind of fooling with that for a little while trying to figure it out and um, so we're gonna start wiring the switch up and I'll be back with you in just one second but I will show that okay what we've done so far is we've got this uh, nifty little switch here which will turn on his um, solenoid for the propane supply click the switch hey it's hot which means we now have propane and uh, we will test that to make sure that works with I guess the stove yep okay so um, do you want to turn it off and we'll see if it works off and then turn it on well, I say fire it up let it okay let it get hot and then we'll I'll turn it off and if it goes out then we know it's right okie dokie Got gas here. You do? Yeah, it's uh. On your speed light calculator. Okay. Good. Yep, it's going down. So yeah, I just bled out all the gas. There you go. I have turned the switch back off. Alright, so the switch works. The switch works, we tested. Works perfectly. It's tested. Terminalizing the positive and negative of the uh, Hootis here. So for the actual detector. For the actual detector. And we'll get rid of the old detector and put it yep. out of the way. For the sake of uh, my confusion, absolutely. No. Now this particular switch has uh, directions on it. So I don't know if that's gonna focus, but when you buy one, I just bought this at the local auto parts store, and uh, it had that on there, so it makes it a little friendlier. 
some of them have uh, like five terminals. This only has three, which is what you what you need is just three terminals. Decided to use insulated connectors. Absolutely. So insulated uh, is a good thing. Yeah. So except for the ground, obviously it doesn't really matter. But so now he's just hooking the. Now which which wire is that one? This one is the one we were talking about before. This is a straight black wire. Yep, straight black wire. And what I'm doing here is we're hardwiring the positive. And we're actually making this one on the, the negatives, the ground side, to where we can disconnect it if you ever have a problem. You just unscrew it, disconnect it, you're good to go. So in other words, at some point in time, if you ever have an issue, this thing decides to go bananas in the middle of the night, you can turn it off without wire clippers. What's the switch for? <laughs> uh, the switch is to turn the propane off. <laughs> oh. so, okay, so two if this deals. starts beeping from hairspray, Stuff like that. Whoa. Oh, that's loud. Yeah. That's way louder than the last one. This thing's supposed to shut up at some point. Yeah, I think it's running a diagnostic. There it goes. Alright. Well, it has started blinking green after I. Uh, and then it'll. Uh, that'll run a steady green. I believe uh, uh, after it's green on. Oh wait, I thought it steadied out. I couldn't tell you. But yeah, it's just yeah. an initial self-diagnostics, I believe. Yeah, I have to check, check the uh, instructions. What are those? Good question. All right, so with that said, we're pushing our switch into the hole. Which we have, nice and clean, sort of. Yeah, not and bad at all. Now we're putting this little dude in here. And it actually has screws that had already came with the other unit, so we're going to put them back in there since they seem to fit the holes. And yeah, it matches up just right. You got matches it? up. Looks nice and swanky. So right now the gas is off. The gas is off. Okay. Yeah, see now this light is green, steady burning green. So. For confusion's sake, we'll get all that out of the way. gas detector plugged in with a solenoid and a switchable solenoid on or off so we can uh, control the valve manually versus yeah. um, I guess we'd call it semi-automatically with the other one yeah the other way if I smelled gas I would have to go turn it off at the bottle I never had that happen thank God but uh, that's what I would have had to do so this uh, just you know, bypass is having to do that, but it's not a bad idea to turn your bottle off when you're it's in storage anyway. So, you know, appreciate it, everybody. Thank you, Chris, for uh, your 12 volt knowledge. Came in handy because I would have not been able to do that, or it would have taken me about eight days. So. Oh, but you know. <laughs> Okay guys, thanks for watching the video. I really appreciate it. I hope this helps somebody. Um, for me, in my mind, it's pretty confusing, especially when we ran into the issue of two hot wires. Uh, we couldn't get the power off of the hot wires, so looked up in the book, thankfully, and apparently, you know, the manufacturer of that, it was CCI, that's out of business now. Um, that's just the normal way they do things. Um, it says on there that it draws very, very little amperage, less amperage than a dash light. So if they hook it to two batteries, uh, it's going to pull it off the most 
charged battery. So if one battery dies, it's gonna automatically pull it from the stronger battery. So, I mean, I guess it's a good idea when they came up with it, but it's a little confusing whenever you have to switch it from one style to the other. If, if I could have bought the exact same CCI thing and just cut wires, this wire there, bam, 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 three wires, no problem, anybody could do that. But uh, the conversion thing's a little tricky. Camping World was, was helpful, but they said, you know, uh, you would have to get rid of the solenoid. And I didn't want to do that. Um, you know, if I could keep the solenoid and, you know, put it on a toggle, which they said I could do, then I just uh, preferred to do that myself. Some of you may just want to get rid of the solenoid or buy the package with the solenoid, but I, I didn't know that was uh, an option until it was too late and already had Chris, uh, you know, scheduled for me to come over and have the other parts. So anyway, I really appreciate y'all watching. I hope this helps. Um, you know, leave a message in the comment section and let me know if you're having an issue or a problem or any questions or what you think about the video. Please like and subscribe and, and uh, hope to see you next time. And remember, stay off the beaten path and take the scenic route.